Welcome back from the break, guys. Up next, we have the top 10 one-hit wonders. These are the games that don't have any sequels yet. If you think we've missed any, go to our Facebook page and let us know. I know we've missed out on a lot, but these are the best ones we could come up with. Stay tuned. At number 10, we have Dishonored. Set in a dark, steampunk-themed world, Dishonored has you running through the industrial city of Dunwall, set somewhere between the 1800s and the 1900s, where technology and otherworldly forces coexist. Combining the first-person point of view and free-running isn't new, but having this kind of setting made it one of the best games released in 2012. Titanfall drops in at number 9. Titanfall is the game many had pinned as a tentpole release for the newest generation of consoles. Arguably, it didn't quite live up to the hype, but its verticality had definitely evolved multiplayer FPS gameplay. Number 8 is Minecraft. Originally released back in 2009 as a development alpha, Minecraft has come a long way, stretching across countless platforms and providing a huge amount of support for the modding community. Fez is number 7. Fez is the game that keeps on giving. You can go far and beyond 100% completion, falling down rabbit holes of massive proportions. The developers seamlessly blended 2D and 3D platforming in a way that really grabbed the gaming industry's attention. Journeying its way to number 6 is Journey. Journey is the game that legitimised the place of smaller games within the industry. The developers sought to evoke in the player a sense of smallness and wonder by removing all forms of communication between you and other players except the use of a musical chime. It won several awards including a Best Score Soundtrack for Visual Media nomination for the 2013 Grammy Awards. At number 5 we have Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This game has a unique mechanic that allows players to control two brothers each with a separate joystick. This leads to some of the most interesting and surprisingly heartfelt moments that you wouldn't really expect from a game of this scope. Psychonauts is at number 4. Psychonauts combines traditional console platformer elements with the kind of strong storytelling, humour and dialogue found in adventure games. It was released back in 2009 on Steam and received critical acclaim as well as several accolades but suffered from poor sales. Dogan's brains. This is an honest to goodness psychic emergency! I wonder! Fighting for number 3 is Shadow of the Colossus. This specific game is unusual within the action-adventure genre in that there are no towns or dungeons to explore, no characters with which to interact, and no enemies to defeat other than the Colossi. Shadow of the Colossus has been described as a puzzle game, as each Colossus's weakness must be identified and exploited before it can be defeated. Making its way to number 2 is Grim Fandango. It was the first adventure game by LucasArts to use 3D computer graphics overlaid on a pre-rendered static background, similar to the Final Fantasy and Resident Evil games of that period. Sony announced at E3 2014 that a remastered version is currently being worked on. But I'm your friend. My name's Manny Calavera. I'm your new travel agent. And the number one one-hit wonder is... The Last of Us. The Last of Us is arguably the best game of the last generation, pushing the PlayStation 3's hardware far beyond where anyone thought possible. With phenomenal performances from the cast and amazing environmental storytelling, this game goes beyond anything previously seen in video games. So even though these games are one-hit wonders, I think some of them stand pretty well by themselves and don't really need a sequel. Like, how would you expand on something like, uh, you know, a Fez, other than having more, like, puzzles or stuff like that? Yeah, I don't think Fez really needs a sequel. I think it definitely stood alone by itself. I think it's a really interesting list to sort of look at and make, although personally I'm still holding out for a Psychonaut sequel. Maybe. Maybe. Somewhere in the far future. <laughs> um, games like Titanfall... Um, you know, they are one-hit wonders, but they're pretty recent. Like, I'd be very surprised if there's not a Titanfall 2, um, especially since last time we talked to the uh, to uh, Respawn Entertainment, they said that they're done with Titanfall for now. So what that means is they could have, like, they've done a bunch of DLCs and they're probably just going to be, like, taking a break and then starting on the next one, which was kind of like a wink-wink, but we're not entirely sure. Well, they could mean more DLC. Yeah. They could also do something else entirely. 
yeah, like just blow us out of the water. It's like something something else that we didn't expect. Squids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Oh. Okay, now we're gonna go to a break. Stay tuned because afterwards, Liam's gonna take us through a retrospective of the Witcher series.